First thing we need to do is gather our materials. So I decided to make a box that is uh, 15 and a half inches wide, six inches deep by three and a half inches tall. So by three and a half inches tall, I decided to go with a one by four, which is actually three and a half inches wide. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna use this uh, thin three sixteenths of an inch mahogany plywood. So I already feel like an idiot because it's been probably a year since I started making these videos. So I'm going to go ahead and feel like an idiot. All right, so now we need to cut this groove down the side. So this is going to make up your box all the way around. So we got to get this groove down the side that will receive whatever base you're using. Like I said, I'm using 3 16 of an inch, so 3 16 of an inch groove. This will slide down in there relatively easy to, well, house the bottom of it. Uh, if you wanted to use three quarter inch or half inch or you could even do something more decorative than that but even heavier than that but we're looking to uh, wind up mass producing these so we wanted to do something that's simple that works it's not going to break and what's relatively friendly for us to put together uh, so let's decide how deep we want to make this go so I'm work working with three quarter inches wide so I want to make this go at least I'm gonna go halfway into it so I want a three eighths inch groove down the side. So we'll take our square, set that at 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, with your saw unplugged or your safety pulled out, you can see the, um, the saw blade here. So we want this to go into 3 eighths of an inch. So we take our square. You could use a smaller square. This is the one I have lying around. I got a six inch one around here somewhere, but tools are everywhere. So we'll uh, set this flat like this is the idea and then bring the saw up to it so let's go ahead and lower the blade we want this this portion of the square here to be flat with the bed of the saw right here now let's bring the blade up to where it just touches the top of the square back and forth try not to chip your blade back and forth. Okay, that's about 3 eighths of an inch. Well, if you guys don't have a cabinet saw, your measurement device here may not be all that accurate. So you can actually I'll ignore that and take your tape measure and look at your saw blade here and you'll notice that teeth are going this way and then they're going this way. So uh, every other like this to create the blade. So if you want to be a very, very accurate, you can measure from find the blade the tooth that's coming out this way against the fence, measure off of that tooth to your fence and bring it down and bring it down to three eighths of an inch or whatever measurement you might want. Epage from there to there. So we're three inches high, we're three eighths of an inch high, we're three eighths of an inch away from the fence to where the blade starts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run the one by four to create a groove. And then you'll find out that since it, you'll find out since I'm using three sixteenths plywood, my blade's only 1 8 which is 2 16 so we're going to have to create a wider pass. Normally I'd put a dado blade in here at 3 16 of an inch or whatever width we need, but I'll show you how to do that without a dado blade. Okay, whenever you turn on the power tool, I'm going to tell you to wear hearing aids or a hearing protection and safety glasses. So these are prescription glasses with plastic lenses, they're good safety, um, safety glasses. Uh, as far as hearing protection goes, I'm already half deaf, so I'm just going to ignore that and go completely deaf. Run the first one. You can type to this fence and type to this fence for the table. Be very careful when you're running a saw not to have your thumb stick out like this. It's very easy to get your fingertip taken off with a table saw. So I like to make sure you know where your thumbs are and push over away from the saw blade. Okay, so here's our first cut, which is actually an eighth of an inch, which is a sixteenth of an inch too small. So we, like I said, we needed to make this a little wider. So all we got to do is move our saw a sixteenth of an inch this way and run this board again. Believe it or not, that's all we got to do. Okay, 
Move this away a sixteenth of an inch, and let's go. Make sure you cut the cruise side. Okay, so I got my groove cut right there. Got this thin plywood we put. And I wanted to have a little bit of slot, just a little bit of room to make it so we can slide her down in there. See, we're down in this groove. If we were going to do mass production, we would run this over and over and over again without moving the saw before we jump to the next phase. And, uh, I'm hoping to get at least two boxes per one before. Uh, today I'm making a prototype. This is going to be the one that's actually being taking pictures of and we're listing on our website at footstepsandfast.com or on Amazon or our Etsy page. So uh, you can get on there if you want to see the pictures of that. I can post a link in the bottom. Uh, but anyways, we have one, one run, one solid piece. And we're going to make a box out of this piece. It's important that we make it out of this piece, the entire consecutive box, because the next one by four we run through could be a different width. Uh, it could be a little different hue in the wood, so take the stain a little different or something along those lines. So if we run out of the same piece, we're not going to run into those issues. So next step, we're going to go ahead and start putting miters on our, um, our boxes at 15 and a half inches. Two of those, but then two at six inches for a 15 and a half by six inch box. Always keep the tool belt close down on my knees for you so I can be in the shot you don't have to see my man boobs. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this, keep this tight to the miter box. I don't have a laser so I'm going to bring this down to the, and I'm going to get it to where the saw is going to barely take any meat off on the very very edge of the 1x4. So we can try to get as many as we can out of one, one stick here. And I'm only making one at this point just to show you guys and make a, a, a prototype for our website. Piece of scrap in the scrap can. Yeah, there's a scrap can there. I'm not just throwing it on the floor. Okay, 15 and a half. Measure it out. 15 and a half. Again, up the roof side against the fence. And I'm going to need to change the bevel. Take advantage of my light here. Okay. Go ahead and change the bevel on this piece, which is the main piece. Come on. Scrap can. So we got my first piece here, which is 15 and a half inches from the, out, the, the very furthest point to the very furthest point. I need to duplicate this. So I could take a pencil and mark uh, with the tape measure, which actually increases the chance of um, mess ups. So what we did was we took, and if you didn't notice, I changed the bevel on the long piece. All we got to do is we line this bad boy up here. Keep it flush right over here, right to there. And then let's just... Trace it. Now on the very far point to the very far point on the outside of the trim, not the inside with the groove, but the outside with the trim, I have my line. I just got cut on that line. So cut this way 45, cut this way 45, 45, 45, 45, or you could, what is it, 360 minus 45 and whatever the math. See what I did here? After you're done cutting them, you want to compare them since we didn't use a stop. We could have set up a stop to mass produce them. Again, I'm making a prototype, so I'm making one. This is how you would probably do it in your shop. So I would take them on the, on the furthest outside here, this side to this side, make sure the exact same length. Sometimes you'll get one, it might look like this. You just need to make this one shorter, or if you accidentally cut this one too short, you'd have to throw it away. And, uh, well, 
I'll throw it away. But you uh, have to redo this one so it's the right length. And that's why we always, always do the long side first. Because if we were to mess this one up, I could turn this into two six inch wide wide pieces and then I don't have to worry about that scrap. So always cut your long miters first and then you'll wind up having a scrap if you do happen to have a mess up, which it does happen. Let's face it. Now the six inches. I'm just going to blow through these guys. It's the exact same process as the 15 inch ones. Okay, before I touch these all up with the sander, we're going to do all at the same time. Might as well do all of our cuts, get all our cuts done with. We need to figure out the exact size that the 3 16 plywood is, eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever plywood you use, scrap piece of anything. You could even have done this same step and just use another one by four, but then you'll have a more shallow box. We're going to go ahead and stick your square. I like to use the square. So you actually want to take take your square, put it into the little groove here. And you can line it up where you can line it up where it, it, this will end, and it winds up being four and three quarter. You can do the same thing with a tape measure. Bring it up to the end, four and three quarter. We want to be in about the same thing. You want a little breathing room. Wood likes to breathe. So I'm going to actually go ahead and make this at four and five eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and set this piece of scrap. Ooh, I got a skin. I'm going to go ahead and cut this at four and five eighths by four and five eighths by fourteen. Oops. Four and five eighths by fourteen and a quarter. Take this piece of scrap wood that I have here from our laser cutting, and let's do it. Four and five eighths. Again, you could measure this. Go ahead and raise this up a hair. Watch those thumbs. Okay, so let's check our vet. Don't think I didn't cut this six times. That's magic camera. Cut it six, seven times till you get it right. So I don't cut, you know, I cut three times, it's still too short, so I don't quite understand. Okay. So get a close up of this. You can see we have just a hair over here of available room off of that groove. Same thing over here. It's exactly what we want. Room for glue. Let's check the 15 and a half inch one. Nice. All right, this one I'm gonna go ahead and put on the very, very edge. Here, you can see I have it actually sticking out. So you're beginning to see how this is gonna come open. It's pretty much the same way that we build our sign frames. Right there, so enough room for glue. We get quality product. Right now we'll go ahead and touch everything up with the sander. Ooh, my coat's right beside the sander. You don't want your coat right beside the sander because then it'll be covered in sawdust. Worse than that, sanding dust. Sanders and other power tools create a wood dust. Just so you're aware that wood dust gets down to your lungs can cause lung cancer. You should be wearing yourself a, a mask, which we all have nowadays, and then we can just put over our face. But I'm not wearing it. I don't know if I'll put that part in or so or not. So I'm running 120 grit paper on my sanding station. This could be cool. Watch me and you're about to fall asleep. 
I just want to make a note that make sure you run the sander with the grain always. If you run it against the grain, unless you're looking for a rustic look, it's going to pull all of your grain up and put striations in the wrong way. It's going to be quite obvious. So let's sand these up. Oh, also don't touch your uh, outside edge or your miter too much. So I'm just coming up here and I'm just barely touching this bevel just to pull these nasty splintery wood things off. And uh, same thing on top. So we're running it flat here, flat here on all four sides. I'm not really touching the miter. If you touch that, you might ruin your uh, 45 degrees and then you're gonna get them to marry up at the wrong angles. Let's continue to be bored watching me sand. There's another must have tool for any wood shop, a pin nailer. This is a 23 gauge uh, pin nailer. You get them in a battery form, electric, or this one's a pneumatic. Wish it was battery, but it's not, it's pneumatic. So we deal with what we got and what God gave us. And that's what we deal with, and that's what we... Again, I don't think I did that on the first try. This is a camera. Maybe it took me 10. Prototype. First try. Right. Okay. Let's take a look here. It's where you can actually see. And th these are your, your miters. See, nice and tight. We could do a butt joint which would just be a straight cut, straight cut. But I notice a lot of the competition out there is actually doing butt joints, so I want to do something a little nicer, which is a miter joint. And a... Let's go ahead and get these up there in a butt. So nice, tight. I'm sorry, so miter joint. So we got ourselves 90 degrees. Our grooves are going to line up, so you can see right where the plywood's going to go. And we could have done a butt joint. Would have been a lot easier just to cut a butt, put it in there, and nail them together and call it a butt joint. But these are a fancier miter joint. And a miter joint is um, French for not butt. That's enough of my French. Okay. I think I've already talked about the pin again. Now we're going to start assembling. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble one long side with two short sides. I have no idea if you can see me. I don't know if you can hear me. We will find that all out when we put in my stunt double. My stunt double. We'll find that all out when I put in my stunt double, Tom Cruise. When we put in my stunt double, Matt Damon. And, uh, and he did, did all the cuts for me. I'm sure the sound was on then. So let's see. Boo. Now let's talk about what we're using. I'm using my pin gun. Pin guns are pretty much needles. So we shoot, that's actually too deep. Look at that. Shoots 23 gauge. These are three quarter inches long. Um, and you're going to say, Jay, this, this is three quarter inch lumber. Those aren't going to reach. Come on, guys. Here's your miter. We're going to bring it through the miter here, and it's going to hit you about half. Three eighths in this, three eighths in the board coming this way. It's just going to hold it together to the glue dries. That's all we got to do, and they're practically invisible. So, three eighths. I'm sorry, three quarter, 23 inch gauge brads. I am using Type Bond Three, which is is this the one that is water clean? Yeah, FDA approved. For indirect food contact so everybody wants indirect food contact glue for a shelf that's going on the back of their toilet because that's what I'm making but regardless interior exterior waterproof glue it's a great glue great wood glue and I'm putting in a glue bot because these are the best things in the world to get glue where you want them to go okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this miter just a little bit you don't want it to go everywhere by a little bit, I mean that much. Just think that this is one big toothpaste brush or toothbrush. Okay, don't be gross. All right, so we're gonna take this. I'm gonna adjust the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. That would make more sense. I wish there was a camera person here, but there is not. 
Okay. Right here, right here, it's good to use a nice flat wood bench, workbench, make it look pretty. If you can, if you can't, just keep it ugly, it's okay. We'll make ugly work. Besides, it's just going on the back of the toilet, so who cares? Four. Did you count them? See, we don't have glue spewing out anywhere because we use a little bit. We use a little bit. We didn't need to get it all up in there. Just a little bit goes a long way. If we did get messy and screw went kind of went everywhere, we would just get a wet rag and clean it up because it's water cleanup and it's FDA approved for indirect food contact for your toilet paper. Okay. Again, boom, other side. You keep it flat like this on the bench, which we know is flat, plywood, whatever, it's flat, crappy bench. Up, here. Oh, it's important. Yeah, I pulled it off, whatever. Okay, it might seem like common sense. It's important. It might seem like common sense, but maybe it's not. Make sure you don't put them in like this. Because once we put in our plywood, it won't work. It needs to be this way. We're going to put in our plywood like this. Yeah, that's what we want. Let's make sure we do it that way, okay? We get this in before you put on the fourth one and complete the square unless you want to cut out the bottom or rip something apart put your bottom in the same way you do panel doors same way we do our sign blanks all that good stuff so I am actually going to put a tiny bit of dab of glue here here and here a little bit up here. Try not to get your glue everywhere, guys. Clean it up when you're done. Be a man. There. 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 Now we're going to slip this into the grooves that we created. Alright. Like this. I guess you could be a woman, too. There's no reason why you couldn't do this. I'm not sexist. So I officially apologize if I said be a man and um, you think I automatically assume I'm talking to a man. I'm not prejudiced. I know women can do this as well. I just say that a lot and I apologize. Very careful with pin nails, especially if you decide to do this in oak or something hard. Pin nails don't always go straight. Sometimes they go in and go woo, and they come out the side. And a three-quarter inch pin in your finger doesn't feel very good. Just think about it. Don't think I didn't do it ten times. It's a prototype. Here we go. Nails out of there, I didn't pull. Now pop the top, bottom up, and we're gonna put more pins in. Shoot them through here. It's gonna go through here, through this piece of plywood, into this fig in. I even like to angle them into itself a little bit, like that. Oh, and about three on the long side, and two on the short side, and plenty.
See the glue? <sighs> Secrets. Swipe it off. Now if you want to add some color to this, we can. If you want to paint it, you can. I'd wait about a half hour for the glue to start to set. Or we can just stain it right now and see what happens. So I'm going to take this into the sign shop where we do all our finishing out of my wood shop. It's a lot cooler in there. Actually, it's hotter, but it's neater. Okay, actually, I'm in the sign shop right now. Let's take a look. Everything we've been making over the weekend or whatever this is. Not a, I don't even know what day it is. So we got signs here. Signs at home. My daughter and I built all these. I'm working on these cool nifty things here. Let's take a look over here. It's our packing area in our old barn. Snow day, nobody came in. So I get to record some stuff for you all. Okay, so box just built. I'm in a weather wood kick. Or let's see what color that's not that one. This one here. I am in a gray weatherwood accelerator mood. Because it dries really fast. First thing you do with a chip brush, which is how I'm going to apply it. Chip brush, I'm going to wipe it off with a rag. Let's get a rag. Right here. Is you pull the loose bristles out. If I was applying a finish, which I'm not, I'm applying a stain, so it doesn't really do that. But always pull the bristles out of the chip brush. Otherwise, you'll regret it one day. We'll start with the bottom. Let's do this. I could do a technique called floating that we started doing, but I don't feel like it. I'm going to show you what you would actually probably be doing at your place. Use a rag or whatever. Uh, so let's do that. Boom. This stuff is awesome. You put it on and you're like, what? Oh, I didn't put anything on. And you come back an hour later and the whole thing's gray. And you're like, whoa. That's amazing. Just make sure when you put it on, it goes on almost clear, not quite, that it all is wet. Because if it's not, you missed a spot. And you'll regret it. Okay, so this is that's kind of neat. So as it dries, it'll get grayer and grayer and grayer. And um, one of my reasons I really, really like this stuff is it's dry really fast. And there you have it. So we got this. I'm not done yet. We'll put some neat little thing right here. Peace. Oh, yeah. I nearly forgot. This is Jay with Footsteps in the Past channel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you see today, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, please just skip over to the next video and thumbs up another one of mine. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.